Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. Another exciting day here as we take a look at some very unusual wrapping on this brand new product. Now this one comes in from Singapore. That's different, huh? Well, by way of, of China, but it's originating from Singapore. So we're starting to uh, spread out globally, I guess. Let's get inside, see what we're looking at. Wow, interesting. Double wrapped. Okay. One, two, three. There we go. It's a sport BP watch. Now, I got to admit, I, I snuck a peek at the title of this video, and I happen to know it's about blood pressure. It's a blood pressure watch. And if you recall on this channel earlier, we uh, reviewed the very first ever blood pressure watch. High-end thing. Came look like in a box of, of uh, chocolates. It's a suitable for Donald Trump to give to all of the people that voted for him. Beautiful watch. And it does blood pressure reading. It had removable bands that you could pop off of it. And you could put it in your pocket if you wanted to. You could... Touch it on your finger, on your wrist, anywhere you want to get blood pressure reading. Nice. Relatively high-end. Yeah. Then we were able to get in this one, which is like a fitness band, you know? They called it a bracelet. And doggone if that thing doesn't do blood pressure, too. And does it really, really well. Every hour automatically uh, transfers the information to a uh, an app on your phone. Nice little thing. And now we're about to unbox the very third, very third of, of our blood pressure reading devices. Let's take a look. <clears throat> Here we go. Uh, says some stuff on the side. Let's look at the back. And it says it's got heart rate monitor, call alert, pedometer, sleep monitor, calories and it's got icons for all these you see that blood press pressure test time a good thing it has time alarm life waterproof and anthermia anthermia it's compatible with uh, the Play Store and Apple, uh, so it works with both uh, platforms and we'll see what kind of tethering app it, it uses. Take that cover off. Oh, Jack in the Box. Ta -da! Ta -da! Oh, it's another shiny one. Wow, it's very shiny. Okay, let's pull this off. Whoa! Hey, this is neat packaging. Look at that. There's the watch. Ah, it's got its charging dock kind of inside packed in with the watch. It uses a charging cable. And open that up. It's got a little short USB connected charger to two pins on the bottom. There they are. Wow, this is uh, kind of like the AmazeFit design. If you watch that video on the AmazeFit watch, round and like a little flying saucer. This thing should snap right there. And it uh, looks like it's even got a little light. So, it, oh, oh, that was just a speck. Okay. Let's take the cover, or protective plastic off. Super reflective screen. My goodness. Is that staying on there? Is that light? Let's see. Yeah, it stays good. I was just messing with it, I guess. Good solid connection. It's got a black, wow, kind of a, I think it's a leather band. Thin little thing, though. Look at that. All right, what else is in the box? Anything? There's a deep hole in there. Hmm. Yeah, there's a manual. And that's it. That's it for the box. But that's a nice little box. Okay, the manual. Let's see what we've got. Is it in Chinese? Yes. Is it in English? Let's hope so. Maybe if I go this way. Yeah, yeah, we got to go backwards. All right, user's manual. Now, honestly, I haven't taken this out yet at all, so this is brand new to me as we're looking at it together. There's a QR code to scan to download the appropriate app, mm -hmm. which 
which I don't even know what that one is yet. Here's our information for connecting to Bluetooth, the main functions of the watch. There's you go. There's the information on how to do your blood pressure, sport blood pressure test, real-time heart monitor, step count, running mode. Okay. A sleep monitor, alarm, personal data setup, some of the icons that you're about to see, what they all mean. And another one. So it's starting to look that this is very similar to the, all the others. We've all the other, only two, but all of them seem to be very similar in nature in that their main focus is doing these readings of blood pressure and heart rate. And they uh, will do some step counting and such, but they're not like an underwater watch that you can take swimming and it can tell a breaststroke. For, wow. From, uh, wow, this is fun. Wow. You know, you, you can't do um, sit-ups and crunches and, and have it detect all of that stuff. Um, hope I didn't scratch it. It's, uh, it's you know, it's it's a medically interesting blood pressure kind of thing, which is kind of what I'm after. I've been really on a hunt for these because as we move into January, February, and people start to really look at uh, losing weight and maintaining a good body health, monitoring your heart rate, blood pressure, food intake, all that is uh, is important. Look at the bevel on the glass there. And this is definitely glass. This is not a cheaply put produced device. Uh, high end here. So we're going to charge it up, going to turn it on, and we're going to check it out, see what it does. All right. Okay, we are all charged up. And as you can see on the watch, it's in the heart rate accumulation mode. It's attempting to get millimeters of mercury reading of blood pressure from my arm. Now, I want to tell you a few things about this watch. Of course, the blood pressure is the main feature. And uh, like I said, we've got a couple of others that we've evaluated. This is better than them in some respects and not as good in others. First of all, let's talk about the display. As you can see, it's not that bright and it's a backlit white display. It really would be nice if they would uh, flip it and make it like um, a lot of the fitness watches that you see, that paper white display, the reflective, so it's really good and visible outdoors. And indoors, you tap the button and get uh, the light to go on. That would be very, very cool. But it's not that way on this one. It does look attractive, though, and it's super thin, like a little flying saucer, metal flying saucer. The way it is on this one, it's uh, simply got an illuminated display with a small time and date and that's all there's no you can't change that and so there's a drawback but if you don't use it so much for looking and collecting and reading the data on the watch but you do it with the interfaced app which we're about to go into then you're you're much better off so this one works really well as a tethered watch where you're primarily using the phone for data you'll see that in a moment you tap it you get the date you get down here, it says 1222 Thursday. That's today's date. Shows you the battery's full. And it shows you, um, I think, your steps right there. See how hard that is to see? Really tiny. Once you press it a second time, you go into attempting to read your uh, blood pressure. Another time, and it attempts to read your heart rate. And a third time shows you your steps for the day. Uh, and it goes out so quickly and you have to start over. So I'm going to move through them quickly. Your steps, your distance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then your uh, time, blood pressure, heart rate, steps, distance, calories burned, sleep time, and back to home. Okay, that's the watch. Think of it as a data collection device mostly, all right? And then think of the app as the, really the thing you're going to use. When you scan the barcode, it'll direct you to a thing called HBand, which you can download from the Play Store. 
you also can see that the H-Band version 2.0 is available. I went through and installed the H-Band and did all the tethering. And then I went back and found this one, uninstalled the other one, reinstalled that one, blah, blah, blah. I would suggest you just go to the um, directly to the Play Store and download H-Band 2.0. When you do and you launch it, you come into this screen. And it's uh, initially going to ask you to log in. Um, and if you skip that step and you don't connect, uh, you don't set up a, a cloud account on your own, it'll go ahead and log you in into just the relationship with the watch. Now, here's the dashboard. You only have three things at the bottom. Dashboard, running, which is where you can start a run, and then settings. Okay, those are the only three things. So everything is here in the dashboard. Now, when you get down in here, you see that, and I've only had it a couple of days. I was going to run it a week or two, but really, all you're going to see is today, yesterday, and two days ago. So I got today, a little bit yesterday, and I didn't have it that day. So here you go. Um, this is today's activity. I did a little bit of steps. You can see them here, and it's broken down every half hour. So it's accumulating your number of steps per half hour for a total with distance and calories burned based on data that you put into the settings. And it accumulates that over time. Now, it's zero until it actually starts. So I began wearing the watch around 8.30 this morning, and that's that first peak. And then at 9 a.m., I probably was showering or something. And then, you know, it uh, each half hour, it shows you the steps that you walk. That's kind of interesting. And it shows you yesterday and... That's it. I can't go back any further. Oh, no, I can. It, yeah. Okay, it's showing all the different days. It's just in that first tab that it's not. Now, I'm not sure how far it goes back and how long it, it stores that data, but um, good. It's, it's all in here, uh, graphically and tabularly. And these are every half hour readings from midnight. So it's doing every half hour period, okay, all the way through for the day. Now you come back here to the uh, main board, and this is how you're doing against your goal when you set your goal up. Whatever number of steps cumulative that is, that's the percentage. So a quick glance, you can see how well you're doing to meeting your daily goal. You get into the detail, there's your steps, there's your sleep, and it tells you uh, when you uh, use it and wear it at night your total duration and how many times you were awake, how long it took to fall asleep, the time you woke up, how many hours and minutes of deep sleep and light sleep. This is really robust. I haven't seen that much breakdown detail on sleeping any on any kind of a device. So this one, kudos. It's way ahead of its class in terms of monitoring uh, the sleep stuff. So if you're not even interested in blood pressure and number of steps, but you got sleep apnea or something, this could be valuable information for you and your, your health professional in just the sleep stuff alone. And again, that's by day, so you can switch the days back and forth here. And there may be some sort of a graph or something. It says no data because I haven't slept with it yet. Not even sure I will. I'm not one to sleep with watches. Now we get down to the other two categories, heart rate and blood pressure. Here's an interesting thing. The heart rate, you see the little dots showing up. This is automatically taken every half hour, and when you don't have the watch on, it correctly puts in zero. It's one of the drawbacks for the little fitness uh, band that we had. It would give you some erroneous result, which got averaged over time with all of your daily and monthly and yearly averages, which is just plain wrong. It just shouldn't show up like this one. If it's trying to send out a signal and it's not touching skin, it's returning zero. When it is, it's returning valid data. And look at this. You have the time in a heart rate zone. So it's figured out based on the criteria you put in for your age and weight and all that kind of stuff. When the heart rate is like 80, that's in the rest zone. Well, now here it's at 79, but it says medium. So maybe, maybe this is when you're walking. It's integrating the, the number of steps together with the heart rate to tell you that you're in a medium zone. There's a moving zone. 
And again, at 10 o'clock, it's uh, medium. I did not take this out and run or like really try to uh, mess my heart up big time, but it could be. See, 105, it came back and it's just moved. So it's probably tied into the, uh, the steps calculation as well. Nonetheless, here's all that information. And as you can see, it's every half hour. Now, I did do this where you can actually have it calculate your bits per, beats per minute live, but it just kind of keeps going. It's a live reading. We'll do that in a minute. And it doesn't ever stop. At least it didn't for quite a while. So I had to pause it. It didn't give me an option to save it. I would have liked that. Maybe I got to make another change to the configuration or something. But you can take your bl uh, blood pressure, your pulse rate on the fly, and it looks like it's going to be continuous. So if you want to wear the watch while you're doing your workout and keep an eye on your pulse, this is a great combination to do it. What's missing, what I wish it had, is, uh, and this is in the AmazeFit watch as far as uh, pulse rate goes. Of course, that one doesn't do blood pressure, but and it's all in Chinese right now. But it has the ability to put in uh, bands, your upper and lower uh, heart rate so that if you're trying to exercise in a zone, you can try to keep everything uh, in that zone, not exceed your maximum, but not also slack off to go below your minimum until your exercise time is up. It'd be a nice addition to have the ability to set that and have the watch vibrate or beep or the phone, at least to notify you when you're out of your zone. But we don't have that yet, but you do have the live blood pressure reading. And you have the graph that's constantly accumulating every half hour. Whether you're wearing it or not, it'll just show zero when you're not. So like yesterday, eh, can I go back to yesterday? Here we go. Okay, there were a couple of spots right there, and you can't touch them, but you can see them when you scroll down. There you go, at... 4.30 and 5 when I first put it on to try it out before dinner and then set it aside until this morning. So as soon as you put it on, it's going to be tapping on you every half hour to accumulate data for your heart rate. Now, what does it do for blood pressure? Well, it's supposed to do the same, the same thing. When you go into the blood pressure reading, uh, you look down in here. Well, okay, I don't. Uh, I have measurements in here, but these are the ones I took manually. Um, when you go in here, you expect it to do the blood pressure every half hour as well, which would be really nice, but I'm not getting that. I'm only getting the blood pressure when I press this button and I do a manual uh, take of the blood pressure. When I do a manual setting on here, going over to here, and use that one to catch the blood pressure, I get the numbers... They disappear off of the screen, <clears throat> and I can't bring them back. And it does not seem to sync over here to put that real-time data at the time I took it into the chart. That's something that I'd love to see. It's probably just a firmware update to be able to capture on the fly the blood pressure reading you do from here over to there. It also doesn't, like, notify you very well. If it's got a beeper in it, it's really, really soft, a, you know, vibrator. When um, your blood pressure reading finally comes through, it doesn't really let you know. And it's such a dim screen, you can't see it outside. And when it goes off, it goes back to um, the clock mode. So it's a work in progress. It's a great first start. It has lots of potential, but it also has a few drawbacks. That said, if you're not into all that automated stuff anyway, it's a super... Um, device for taking real-time uh, blood pressure readings. Here's what I did. I took one like at 11.28 this morning, and this is what it came up with. And then I got everything set up. I settled down. I sat down. What I did is I put my arm up over my head, and I took a reading, and I got this. Then I put it at my heart level, like it recommended in the uh, instructions, and I got that. Then I stood up, and I let my arm dangle beside me, you notice it's only every couple of minutes apart, minute apart, and I got that reading. Then I put it back up across from my heart, and I got that reading. So two things. <laughs> you guys notice that I just, I, I'm not that good at math. So two things. First thing is that it 
really does seem consistent. Uh, I get the same reading at basically the same place with my arm right across from my heart. Second thing is it definitely looks like that is a factor. Uh, it's slightly different. Well, 120 to 128. This is with my arm up in the air, and this is with my arm straight down. And third thing, wait till you see this live, folks. I'll show you why I got excited to do it this way in just a minute when I put the watch on and we really activate this thing. So that's the blood pressure. That's the heart rate. That's sleep. And that's steps. And that's all this thing does. It's not tracking your swimming or your jogging or any of the other really sports-related things. It's just basically giving you your step count. There, do you see it just sink sink back up again? And uh, yesterday and two days ago. As quick, quick reference, I guess. There you go. But when you get into it, obviously you can go day by day this way. There does not seem to be um, any way of showing you the weekly or the monthly. That was a nice benefit that we saw on one or both of the other ones. So there's goods and bads. There's things I'd take from each to accumulate together to get the ideal blood pressure, heart rate monitoring uh, device. And it's still a work in progress. Okay, let's talk about running. Running, when you start a beginner run, it's going to flash up a, uh, a map, an aerial map of your location through GPS in your watch, I mean in your phone. And then you hit a start button and it's going to uh, accumulate uh, information. Uh, about your run. I tried it and just walked around the house and I got nothing. It really didn't track and I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, but that's how you'd start that. You hit begin run and you go in and so you can you can actually get some meaningful data on your runs including it looks like the track of where you're running to. That's that whole tab. And then settings is where we get into all the setup. We are using the VO6 is what they call this one although uh, from Banggood it's called the H09, um, but it's identified internally as the V06. There's the goal where you can set how many, I usually start at 6,000, uh, how many steps you want, your hours of sleep that you want it to track, but notice it's not telling you when it starts. However, if you remember back in the sleep thing, it said uh, how long it took you to actually fall asleep. So I'm not sure how that works yet either. You can adjust your uh, units to imperial or metric, give feedback, get about us, check the version update, and it's the latest one because we just downloaded that from the Play Store. Now, here's where it gets more interesting. It's currently set up to interface with We Run as a third-party platform. And it tells you that you can access We Run and friends to share the fun of sports by binding this to that app. And it gives you information on how to go about doing that if you want to use We Run. All right. Again, it's way over where I'm going with this introductory video. You'd have to get in here and play with this yourself to see how much data is transferred, what is shared with your friends, what isn't, so forth. Log out. Remember, I am logged in, but I never set up an account. So I'm logged in anonymously somehow into the system for tracking this information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, look at that. Now it's back to no data. So it is updating itself. or so. Oh, no, I'm, I'm on two days ago. No wonder. Okay, let's go back to today. Now, we're going to put this on. I'm going to show you something that <laughs> I looked at this and I went, oh, yeah, this is fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. So, okay, I got the watch on, right? Now, there's the time, 11.59. Oh, it's going to be doing something in one minute, probably catching another heart rate. You know what? Let's just check that. You got time, right? So there's the back of it, and it's... uh. Still at 11.59, I'm upside down. At 12, it should attempt to uh, take another heart rate meeting, uh, uh, reading for us. And I wish another uh, blood pressure reading. That would be great. We're still at 11.59? Yeah. 
It must have just been at the beginning of 1159. Okay, what else can I tell you about this? That's it. There's no da There's just a dashboard. Usually there's something you can go back, pull out a side menu. No, no menus anywhere else. Uh, basic, basic app. There you go. Now it's clicked in. You see that? And the watch is off. It didn't turn on at all. So now I'm going to put it back on my arm and show you what I was going to show you in the app. Of course, it has to finish taking my heart rate. And, and the data has, uh, has appeared, and the last known reading was at 11.30 a.m., and it should be taking a 12 noon one right now, and I'm not sure when it would sync up. But this is what I want to show you. We're going to go into the blood pressure, and we're going to... Uh, I hate to do this while it's doing my pulse. Ah, well, we'll mess it up, whatever. Good good stress test. I'm going to come in here. <clears throat> now watch carefully. You're not going to be able to see this on camera because I got my watch on my arm. But what I'm going to do is start it out. Now you see this? This is the waveform of my heart. It's not one of those phony ones that sometimes you see on watches. This is the real deal. How do I know? Watch this. If I mess around with it, you see it change? Shake it, leave it alone, it'll settle down. So that is the actual track of my heartbeat. And you see the squiggly uh, bumps along the edges going up and down? That's the systolic, diastolic, and probably personal signature of my heart wave that, you know, in a security sense, with a little bit more advanced software, could distinguish me from anybody else wearing this watch. And this watch could probably be used to um, unlock devices like your fingerprint does right now, simply with a watch. Any out, anybody into patents out there? Hello, I just gave you a little hint of something. I'm not going to save that because we messed around with it. But, I mean, really, if they can get the pulse, and from there you can go to get the heart uh, blood pressure and blood oxygen, which, by the way, this watch does not do, but the other ones do blood oxygen as well. If you can see that waveform and you can see the unique character of it that identifies you as you, well, you could use it for all sorts of things. Here's what I wanted to show you. I'm going to start it again. And the wave becomes regular like that. Now I'm going to put it way up over my head. And I'm holding my arm straight up. There's not as much blood going up to the capillaries there. And you see how the waveform is having to try to adjust to compensate for that. It's not getting a clean, solid signal as it would right now. I put it on my heart, like the Pledge of Allegiance pose, and it's starting to come back into calibration. And there it's giving me, um, from peak to trough, some sort of a reading. It's not having the squiggles in there, so I think it's just normalized the blood pressure itself there's my signature starting to come in. But of course, we're way through the whole process. So you want to be steady and consistent when you do it. And lastly, I'm going to start it up again. And you know, I was showing it to you down here. So I'm going to put it over my heart like this. I hope you guys have time for this. I find this stuff fascinating. Numbers and data, it's wonderful stuff. And you can just have so much fun with this watch. Okay, now it's over my heart, but I'm going to drop it down behind me, let's say. It's, it's like all the way down, just dangling. And you see how um, it's shifting from there as well. And now back up overhead. Just put it over my head. I'm not moving the watch around, I just moved my arm. So it finds that new position, and then it tries to automatically normalize it so it can get the reading information out of that. This is really one sophisticated watch here. And, um, you know, it's not all that much money. We're, we're really talking, what are we talking? We're talking right now under 50 bucks for this. And it's an exquisite design. It really is nicely made, solid. I uh, wish, again, it had a better display. But it is functional. And you can get it from Banggood. And we have buying links down below. So check it out. And uh, 
Yeah, welcome to a whole new world as we move into 2017, where we're going to have not just heart rate, but blood pressure, blood oxygen, and all sorts of other goodies in fitness bands and smartwatches. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. Thank you uh, for your attention. I'm glad you stuck with us all the way, and we'll see you again soon.